All right, I am back with a clean screen and ready to finish this first paragraph. We translated so far the following, just to review. We are announcing also to you this. I'll review that in a minute, but why are we doing it? In order that also you might have fellowship. I think I didn't stop for this word. This is the subjunctive that goes with the purpose. Hina. In order that you have, okay, in order that you might have fellowship with us, period. So what are they announcing? That which was from the beginning, that which we have heard, that which we have seen with the eyes of us, that which we gazed at, Arist, that happened in the past, and the hands of us touched, Arist, that happened in the past, concerning the word of life, then the digression we'll get to in just a minute, that which we have seen and heard, we are announcing also to you. So, John has mentioned the word of life, and now he's going to talk about this life for a little while. So let's first read the grammar of that and then make some comments. And, hey Zoe, and the life, ephanerothe, it's from phanerao. See the lengthened, kind of contracting vowel, the aorist, passive ending, the augment, so it's to reveal aorist passive, so it was revealed, and the life was revealed, and, same word as this one again, we have seen, and, marturumen, that's the epsilon contract verb, and we are bearing witness, all oh, and, so we're doing, we, we have done this, and we are doing this, and we are doing this. So, and we have seen and are bearing witness and are announcing, same word that's gonna show up again, to you, what are we announcing to you? Well, we've already said we're, we're announcing all these things, but now all these things are defined as the eternal life, or just eternal life. Usually the Greeks will put a definite article in front of an abstract noun. So we're announcing to you eternal life. So the one who was at the beginning is the word, same as in Gospel of John. He's the word of life. What kind of life? Eternal life. So Jesus is not named, it's coming up later, but Jesus is the one who was from the beginning. Jesus is the eternal life that's being announced. Jesus is the one they heard and saw and touched and felt. Jesus is the one they are now bearing witness about and announcing to the readers. So, now, the last part uh, is hatis. So, the word hey is actually a relative pronoun, except the tis is added so that it makes it what we call an indefinite relative pronoun. It's that which, or the one who, or if it was a feminine, it would be she who, relative pronoun. The reason it's feminine is because life is feminine. So in English, we'll have to say it for life. In Greek, they would say she because it's a feminine noun. So we are announcing to you the life which, or the life who, if it really was, if it was a person, it's just, it's feminine. So we, we shift it to neuter in English because the life is a neuter English word, even if it's a feminine Greek word. So the life which was. Uh, by adding the tis, it doesn't necessarily change the meaning. It could make it indefinite, whatever that is, that life, whatever it is, which, but it doesn't necessarily do that. In Greek, they tended to add this indefinite pronoun to only these relative pronouns. So these are 
Yeah, these are three relative pronouns which are really easily confused with definite articles because they're exactly the same except for the accent. And so whenever these three show up, it's not uncommon for them to add hey tis, hi tines, or hoi tines. In other words, add the relative uh, indefinite pronoun in order that it's clear that these are actually relative pronouns and not definite articles. So we should just read it as which. So we are bearing witness and we are announcing to you the eternal life which was prostonpatera. Uh, literally, it would be up against the Father. We, we sometimes translate it as with the Father. There's other prepositions that mean with, meta with the genitive, soon with the dative. When you use pros with the accusative, it has more the flavor of being right up there in God's presence, up against, uh, in the same way that pros usually means movement towards. So, who was with the Father and was revealed or manifested to us. So all of that is a digression. So if you hear the sentence once more and just hear it as a digression that explains more about the life before he finishes the sentence. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we gazed at, which our hands touched, concerning the life, and speaking of life, the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and we're bearing witness, and we're announcing to you the eternal life that was with the Father and has been revealed to us. Now he's finished talking about the life, so he goes back to the main sentence. That which we have seen and heard, we are announcing also to you, so that you also can have fellowship with us. Now let's finish the paragraph, and then we finish the hardest part of the letter by far. And the fellowship, the hemetera. So this is an, a possessive adjective. It's the word that means our. It's not hemon, which would also mean our. This is the pronoun of us. This is the adjective that means ours. So it agrees in case, number, gender with the noun. So it's our fellowship. And our fellowship is, is implied, Esten. Uh, notice the position of de. It's a little unusual. You would expect it to be second in the sentence. That actually is a bit of a clue that this period maybe should just disappear. So the sentence is just keeping writing on go, right on going. So we had to find some place to put it. Could have put it right there between the article and the noun, but perhaps unusually it goes here. It's usually a post positive. And indeed, or and also, our fellowship is, is implied, meta to patras, meta with the genitive means with, with the father and with the son of him. I'm going to suggest that that's the right translation, and then in a second I'll show you that there could be another translation for that. So it's with the son, genitive because of the preposition, and then the son of him, genitive because it's the son of someone. So with the father and with the son of him, of the father. So the son of the father. And then we're told who it is. Jesus Christ. So finally we get... A reference to Jesus. Now, the other way that this could have been translated, it just so happens that this is genitive because of this, and this is genitive because it's of the Father. But the result of these two genitives side by side is that it could look like we've deliberately chosen this word and made it agree with this noun so that it has another meaning. Do you remember what out to means? if it functions not as a pronoun, but as an adjective. If it would be here, then it would be the same son. If it's here, then it's the son himself. So there's really no way to know for sure which is the right way to translate this. I'll tell you the two translations, and I think you'd agree with me that the first is more likely. So we can translate it as with the father and with his son, or with 
the Father and with the Son himself. It just makes more sense to go with his Son. But I think you can see that this is an ambiguous word in this context. So that finishes this first, well, I'm going to call it the end of the first paragraph. It's for sure the end of the first sentence, even though in our English translations we had a period over here already. And now the text is going to get at least somewhat easier. Uh, the good news is that the more weeks we do this together, the easier and easier and easier it's going to get. So if it doesn't feel like it's getting a lot easier really quickly, hang in there. It'll get easier as we get more and more and more practice. So we'll, take, we'll continue to do this really slowly, word for word, so that you can figure out exactly what each word is doing. Uh, strongly encourage you to just keep hitting pause in these recordings. Uh, if something isn't completely clear, we'll go back just a little bit. And uh, that way, even if it takes you, I don't think the videos are gonna be more than the three hours we would have spent in class, they'll probably be less, but it might well take you more than three hours to work through it, but this is then also part of your homework as you uh, figure out how to understand these, these texts. Nevertheless, work ahead first and then use the video to see how you did and fill in the parts that might have been challenged, etc. I'm going to assume that it's, we're only going to go maybe in, until about chapter 2, verse 5, and then we're done for the class that we should have met on the 16th. Uh, I assume we're going to meet in class two weeks later after I've recovered somewhat from my surgery, but just in case the COVID virus prevents that, we may just end up doing more classes in precisely this method. So that finishes the first paragraph. Next uh, screen is going to move on from there.